we have gotten near to the closest that you can get to a perfect Noel build. We'll be doing the perfect one one day eventually, but today we're gonna be going over the big changes that I got for my Noel build and all about the information about why this is the way that you wanna be building her. I know there's an increased knowledge need for this character in Genshin Impact. Like you guys have been playing her more and more and more and more, and she is a fantastic arsenal, a sweet, of just everything you need all in one character. So let's go over her artifacts here real quick here for you guys. We'll start with the flower, of course. And you saw the picture, the big flower, the crit rate, crit damage, defense percent flower, attack percent as well, 17 defense, 9% attack, 21 crit damage, 3.5% crit chance. That's not fair, that's strong, that's very good. But on top of that, we also got this other one, in case you wanna do a little bit less damage, three and a half crit rate, 5.1% defense, 13 crit damage, and then 21% energy recharge. So this would be something I'd wear if I need that extra energy recharge to fill her ult up faster. Maybe I'm fighting, you know, some bigger monsters. Now, not so much AOE, so there's not enough orbs going around, but run around a double geo team. And you're not gonna need a ton of energy recharge, right? 130, 140, good to go there. Running around a triple geo team like moi, and you need like 128% crit, uh, energy recharge. So keep that in mind there. But yeah, fantastic thing here as well. And then we have the flower here. This is one that I'm looking to upgrade still. That's why this can't be called the perfect Noel video yet. Okay. Uh, but it's got 10 crit rate, which is still very nice. 7.8% uh, crit damage, which is a max crit damage roll in one roll. 8.7% attack percent. And then the Zonks Scoob Elemental Mastery. So yeah, Elemental Mastery, kind of a dead stat there. I'm looking to upgrade this one eventually. Just hasn't happened yet. It'll happen eventually because it's not super hard to upgrade this because really it's that 10 crit rate that I'm looking at. And that's 7.8% crit damage. I can get that attack percent to be a defense percent roll or, you know, get that elemental mastery just like gone <laughs> and then increase that crit damage and that crit rate a little bit. Mm, that'll be a spicy piece. And that's what we're looking for when we're building Noel here. Now we have the defense percent sands, very strong. And you guys out there should really be using that defense percent sands. All right, even if you're not Constellation 6, we'll talk about that after we go through the artifacts because we're gonna be talking about a couple of different things that I'll get comments on. We're like, is this better? Is this better? Is this better or this better? So I know there's uh, some uh, some questions to be answered about that as well. So we got 22 crit damage, awesome. Energy recharge, awesome. The rest of the stats in this artifact, not that appealing. This is definitely tied to be uh, one of the worst ones I have access to between the feather and the sands there because two wasted rolls, no crit chance, could have a little bit more crit chance, like 3% more at least if that attack flat was something else. So. Also something that I could work on in the future, but still big crit damage and the energy charge is nice because you don't want 120, 130 like I talked about. Now we have this one as well. Ah, it's, it's pretty good, right? It's pretty good. All right. Geo damage goblet, 20 crit damage, 3.9% crit rate, 12% attack, flat HP. Obviously that flat HP could have been defense percent and then we would be really getting them gains in here on this Noel build. But once again, it's one of those, you know, 3% crit rate, 20% crit damage sort of artifacts there. And it's a Geo Goblet on the set that I'm using. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. So then we have the circlet here. It's my off piece. So I'm using a crit rate circlet. All right. And it has 26% crit damage on it and that 18% energy recharge. So between the couple pieces of gear that have that little bit of energy recharge on them, I hit the point that I want to for her. And then we have a lot of crit damage substats, not a lot of crit rate, but a lot of crit damage ones. So we want to boost that crit rate up. And I want to talk about these three things in particular. Why Geo Damage Goblet? Why Defense Percent Sands? And then is it a crit rate circlet? Is it a crit damage circlet? That's going to be dependent on your artifact substats there. So let's tackle these in order. Why Defense Percent Sands, right? Why not, why not Attack Percent Sands? Or why not Energy Recharge Sands? What is the draw here for that Defense Percent? Noelle does multiple things, right? She can do and dish out some damage with AOE with that elemental burst active. Awesome. She also has shields and she also has heals. Now, all three of those things scale off of defense percent. If you're not C6 and your elemental burst isn't leveled up yet, you're not gonna get the greatest defense percent to attack scaling from her elemental burst. And you will do a little bit more damage by having an attack percent sans on. But what you're giving up is a ton of shields and a ton of heals. It's not worth it, in my opinion, and I've never said that it was worth it uh, to give up just that little bit of damage or gain just a little bit of damage on all of her defensive utility. Now, a lot of people think that she has one shield. 
Wrong, my friend, wrong. So, a lot of people think this is her only way to shield with Breastplate because a lot of people overlook this first ascension here, Devotion, right? When Noelle is in the party, but she's not active. So if you have her in the back, right in the back line, when your active character falls below 30% HP, she creates a shield that lasts up to 20 seconds and absorbs damage equal to 400% of her defense. And then it is a Geo shield, so it also gets affected by that buff that happened back in 1.3, whereas 150% damage absorption effectiveness against all elemental attacks and all physical damage. So if you get like a, a 15k shield off this because you got your white blind stacks, you swap her out and your active character gets whammied really fast, right? If you get up to like a 15k shield or a 10k shield, in the case of a 10k shield, well, it puts the 10k on, but it's got that 150% absorption effectiveness. So it really absorbs 15,000 damage in the 15k shield, but actually absorb 22,500 damage. That's more than a lot of you guys' characters, actual HP bars, all of them squishy DPS. She can come in there, boom, save them, and that shield lasts for 20 seconds. So you just go in there, do your thing with your with your DPS. That's fine. That shield wears off, and guess what? You swap in, you breastplate, you heal them back up, and then they have this shield. And then Devotion has a 60 second cooldown. So it doesn't have like 100% uptime or anything, but it's got a one minute cooldown. That's crazy strong. A lot of these passive effects that like save you, all right, like Barbara C6 or whatever, this effectively saves your character and it's on a one minute cooldown. You might not even notice it happening and you're like, why am I not dead? Why am I not dead? Why? You got this nice little shield around you and you're good to go. So absolutely fantastic utility. If you give up those defense percent sands, you're losing out onto the heals, the shielding from breastplate and the shielding from devotion as well, all for just a tiny bit more damage there so definitely 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 think twice about that attack or defense percent sans now the geo goblet here we just made an argument why you want defense percent so why wouldn't you want a defense percent goblet right because they're giving up you know shields and heals for a geo damage bonus now the other thing noelle does do she can dish out some very good numbers especially with some higher end gear um but especially at c6 as well or even with just a maxed out Elemental Burst, because she still gets 75% a defense to attack percent, even without C6. Amazing. Uh, but the other thing here is that attack percent worse than defense percent for damage, if you have C6. Attack percent better than defense percent for damage, but the damage you gain with that attack percent isn't all that much. The tiny, tiny, tiny amount. The Geo Damage bonus here, though, you're giving up some decent shields and heals from your elemental skill and your, your ascension one. But what you do gain is you gain a bunch of damage. You gain a ton of damage by having her geo damage bonus as her goblet, because the only time she's really out looking to do damage is with that elemental burst. She's never gonna be out there with just no elemental burst, hitting monsters and stuff. No, 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 no. Geo damage bonus goblet does affect your normal attack and your charge attack while underneath your elemental burst effect as well, because you do geo damage. On top of that, if you ever in the retracing bull lights like I do, the damage she does after you elemental burst is a normal attack and is a charge attack. So you get a whopping 86.6% just straight up damage mod to all of her normal and charge attacks she's doing against all those monsters in AOE. And that is well worth the loss that you have on your shields and your healing because eventually, right, you guys are gonna have some defense percent uh, substats. You're gonna have a bunch of uh, defense from being level 90. You're gonna have white blind on. Uh, you might have some stacks for that as well to help your heals and shields out. Uh, that you apply it right after you get those white blind stacks so you can hit a ton of defense percent even with a geo damage goblet and it's going to boost your damage into the stratosphere so the last thing to talk about here as far as main stat rolls why would you use a crit rate circlet or why would you use a crit damage circlet so the magic thing tldr the magic ratio as this normally talked about is the one to two ratio for every one crit you want two crit damage which is a good rule of thumb. So if you have 50% crit rate, you want 100% crit damage. If you have 75% crit rate, you want 150% crit damage. But that's where the ratio rule kind of breaks down there because good luck having 75% crit rate and 150% crit damage on any character that doesn't get one of those two stats from their ascension, which is the vast amount of those characters in the game. There's be, there would be no way for me to get another 21 crit rate as well as 2% more crit damage with what we have here, especially not when I want some energy recharge as well. 
So the other rule of thumb I like to go about saying is that if you don't have 55 crit rate without using a crit rate main stat artifact, say you have like 20% crit rate because you have low substat rolls in your crit rate. If you have low substat rolls and you're at like 20, 25% crit rate, you're going to want to use a crit rate circlet. However, without your crit rate circlet on, if you have a, just a ton, right? You have like 12% crit rate on everything. You're sitting at like 48% crit rate between your four artifacts. Then it's time for you to go for that crit damage circlet because your crit rate substats are high and your crit damage substats aren't going to be as high. And so what you do is you get a crit damage circlet because you already have, you know, 48, 55%, especially if you have crit chance subset on your crit damage circlet. So you have that 55% crit rate. And then you're going to naturally have a 100, 120, 130 crit damage. It's going to mathematically work out for you that way as well, because you're going to have that magic close to it, two to one ratio. Whereas if you say you had all that crit rate substat, right? You're at like 50% crit rate without your circlet and you throw the crit rate circlet on, but you have high crit rate substats. Now you're going to have 85% crit rate, but your crit damage is going to be like 70. And you have, now you have like almost the inverse ratio or you have a one-to-one -one ratio which is not as much damage there for you guys so that is the general rule of thumb when picking between a crit rate and a crit damage circlet or noel or any other character uh for that matter especially those like we talked about they don't have crit rate or crit damage for their sub stats there and then obviously the sword of choice here the claymore the white blind this is because just like we talked about with all the other stuff you can do shields, healing, and damage at the same time. And this weapon facilitates all three of those things. So it's got defense percent as its main stat there. Boom, helping out your shields, helping out your healing. The infusion blade here, the refinement rank, one, two, three, four. Four stacks, R4, 10% attack and 10% defense per stack. So that's gonna be 40%. If you get this bad boy to R5, it's 48% attack, 48% defense there. So big shields, big healing, and then when you Swap in with that elemental burst, you have all of this defense, almost 100% more defense there for your shields and healing. And then you're going to have that 100% defense bonus, and it's going to swap over to attack, and you're going to get an attack percent too. So you have this big steroid of attack and defense percent. You have huge shields, huge healing. You're going to have a monstrous attack percent number. You go from like 1,259 attack, and you hit pop that elemental burst, you have like 5k attack. And then you supplement that by building her, like we have her built, crit rate, crit damage. A little bit of energy recharge so you can keep that elemental burst up consistently you're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff there so that's how i have noel built and it is a monster of a build for this character she is uh she's she's ascending godhood as you would but let me know how you guys are building your noels down in the comment section below if you have any other questions comments concerns complaints you can put them down you put the complaints down there too that's fine but definitely make sure to subscribe for more Genshin Impact content, as well as hit that like button. It helps out a ton. It's the number one thing that we can do to fight the algorithm and get up there to have some more fun in Genshin with all you guys. Until then, guys, have fun out there, and I'll see you in the next one.